Welcome to Young People Nation. Listen to us weekly as we commit to bring transparency, healing, and truth to the everyday situations in life that might bring you down. Join us for your weekly dose of inspiration. Thank you for listening to Young People Nation. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And now, here's your host, Eugene and Donna Perry. Let's go. Christ is the foundation. Know he's where it going to lead us. Know I'm already going. Taking steps, I believe in. Giving guidance to the youth. Giving guidance to the lost. Giving the world to the project. Lead them back to the cross. Good day and welcome to Young People Nation and we are just grateful again for how God has opened up doors and have given us so much support from the community and from our sponsors. So again, we'd like to say thank you all so, so much. We could not have done this without God and the community and just the group of people he has graced us with. So we always like to now begin our sessions with a huge thank you. Uh, we're in session four with Mr. Michael Fortino. And Michael has just been such a blessing. I mean, it's just a blessing to encounter him. And before he he um, in, um, embark, embarks on his huge career that we may can text Michael and say, you you available and get a, get a reply text back yep. next week. A week after, okay? Because he's going to be that guy, but he's a very humble guy. God can trust him with that level of um, influence, and and um, his career is booming. He's an actor. He's an artistic director. Um, he is huge in the community. He's going back to school, and he's tapping into some other adventures here in Augusta, where he's from. And so we like to say welcome back michael oh thank you for having me of course. yes yes so we're in session four michael and the importance of holding himself accountable now michael talked about that a little bit in session three about accountability so what does that look like for michael holding himself accountable well that uh that looks like t uh, taking responsibility for mm. my own mess ups mm. and my own mistakes huge and, 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 you know, it's easy yes. to blame, especially in, in this career, to blame outside factors for why you didn't get the role. And sometimes that is the case. And sometimes mm -hmm, right. it is that I'm too young or it is that I'm too old mm -hmm. or too skinny or whatever. It, that does play a part into mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. But the role, the, the auditions that I'm not prepared for, that's me. Right. Okay. That's me. And the, and the things that I'm not prepared for, that's on me. Okay. Um, and... And it's, you know, I would usually for times, you know, especially when things were kind of okay, I would just go in and do it and kind of wing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it would still be fine. But in my mind, I knew that it wasn't the best what I could do. Okay. Right. And it, I would just put out passable. And, and that, and at a certain time that was like, well, if if you want to have a passable career, mm -hmm. then that's great. Right. You're yes. definitely setting yourself up for like a, Hey, I did a few cool things once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but if I want to make this my life and I want to make this, um, something where I could truly make an impact in my own community, mm -hmm. then it's going to take so much more it's dedication, not dedication huh? work and faith. Yes. Ooh, I like that. You can look at the other side of that. You, you, you give a lackluster, for, uh, performance for, 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 for a part and then you get it and then you say oh god I got a part I don't want exactly exactly <laughs> and and yeah and yeah <laughs> and so that's with life in general you're gonna whatever you put into anything you know and sometimes it, it doesn't seem fair now that, that you, you can go and put a whole lot in something and get nothing, nothing. out yeah. Uh, and I've learned in, in my journey is that, okay, was I even supposed to put anything in there? Right. You understand? Maybe I, I, I went in there um, with the cape on saying, I'm going to pour all of me in there. And then I walk away and they're like, thank you. Yeah. You know, thanks mm -hmm. for thank all you. you did. We'll call you. Right. Which never <laughs> happens, they don't. right? They don't. And so um, 
the, but I like the accountability because we do have to own our part in any situation. Exactly, and yeah, even outside of performing, yes, who I who I am as a person, how I feel, and how that impacts other people. Yes, I had a really hard time understanding how my anxiety would affect other people. Yes, I I, I used to be like, well, that's my anxiety right, <laughs> for me to deal with, but then when I realized. You know, that affects my relationships. Yes. It really affects not only with the people I'm seeing or dating, but also with my family. Mm -hmm. Yes. My mom had to see so much of my anxiety as far as I'm going to school full time. I'm doing three plays right now and I can't and I work full time. And I'm like, right. how am I, you know, and, and 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 at the same time, my mom would have to deal with things much more difficult than that. Mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. wouldn't act like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. She would yeah. never come home and treat me like that. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. Things need to change here. Yes. I need to be able to compartmentalize my my issues and my, my anxiety. And make, yes. And the reason I feel the way I do is because I'm not good at managing time. And, mm -hmm. you know, I put too much on my plate. I have, I'm a people pleaser and I have a hard time saying no oh, when I know okay. I can't. Yes. Oh, and yeah, the, I got I got an excuse now. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, you know... It, it had to change. I have to be had to be comfortable with saying no, mm -hmm. even though I want to do something. That's right. But I have to be fair to the the commitments that I have made, and to the 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 people in my life that, like you said, you have to make time for people. Yes, you have to. And yes. um, I have to make time for my mom. I have to make time for her to hang out and do things yes. outside of just seeing her mm -hmm. at home. That's right. That's right. And. Not only that, but there are my fr there's certain friends that need that time too. Yes, and yes. learning how to and I've learned that I'm much more happier in life, still pursuing what I want to pursue mm -hmm. while making time for the people that yes. I need to see and and fulfilling the commitments that I need to fulfill, rather than just blocking everybody out and mm -hmm. just going for the main goal that I want. Yes, because that that is not what I want. I, and I, for a time I was like, I don't care about the friends. I don't care about the relationships I make along the way. Mm -hmm. I just have a goal and I want to take care of myself and I want to take care of my family. And that's a good idea to have, but without a sense of community and without mm. a sense of faith. Yes. That also. Yes. You're just, you're just fighting. You're just fighting the air. Yes. It feels like yes. you're, you're, you're achieving nothing but you have this attitude in you that's like you're just so cold and you're just so determined mm -hmm. but without without if i didn't have the people on the journey on my journey it, it, i wouldn't even be where i am so it, it it took me a while to realize um that a lot of the good opportunities came from the person that i am not mm -hmm. from the talent that i have awesome from yeah. the person you are Yes. Versus your talent. Exactly. And that's powerful. I felt like those were hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I used to think if people didn't like my talent, they didn't like me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they liked my talent, then they liked me as a person, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. wasn't, it's not the, tr it's not true. Yeah. You know, uh, from a business point, they might like you because of your talent, mm -hmm. you know, because you're making the business money. Right. But that doesn't mean they like you fundamentally as a exactly. person. Exactly. <laughs> that's two separate <laughs> those things. Those are way separate yes, things. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I'm like that at my job. I know that I have an assignment and they like mm, me, right. but they like me for how I'm helping them. It's an exchange. Absolutely. It is yes. an exchange. And but it's not like we're going to have breakfast every Saturday. <laughs> right. know, it's not, exactly. That's, it's not exactly. that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And so um, I like what you, I just love that accountability part because I believe mo if most of us will do that, we will get along better with society as a whole. I agree. I should not expect things out of a person they don't have to give, and they don't want to give that over here. Exactly. You understand? And the same thing here. I I, I know how to say no, because <laughs> I've, I learned that later mm -hmm. in life. Now, when I was 30, I, no, I did not. Right. I did not. It's but you still, know, the only way that a, being, to being accountable, that you can be successful, you had to make up your mind that no is not a bad word. It's not. That's right. It's not. That's right. Because you're doing them like, I like how you said you're doing them a disservice mm -hmm. because they're not going to get all of you. Right. They're just going to mm -hmm. get a portion 
Exactly. For you just saying, okay, because I don't want to disappoint them, I'm going to say yes. But in all actuality, when you've carved out your day, um, you don't have time per se to do what is asked of you. Exactly. And, And a lot of the accountability was learning how to separate me, the person, me, the performer. Right. Mm -hmm. Because um, as a performer, you're su- you're supposed to say yes to everything because you should just be grateful to be able to perform, mm. which is su- – you should be grateful to perform. Absolutely. Yes. But that doesn't mean that Michael, the the person, doesn't need time for, for me and to do That's the things right. that I need to do. Yes. Right. Um, and it took it took a lot of time – to separate that because it was just like, I felt like even as the person, when I would say no to things, I was like, man, I'm being really ungrateful for this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. No. And it's like, no, it's just like you said, I want to, I want to do a great job. I don't want to do a passable job. For yes. You. Yes. And so holding myself accountable in that regard was, was very important. And to finally look at myself with adult eyes, mm-hmm. very which good. is hard to do. Yeah. Because I am the youngest sibling. Okay. I, mm-hmm. In every, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm the youngest of five. Um, I am was always the youngest performer in my group. I performed at Augusta University mm-hmm. when I was uh, eight and nine years old. That's when I started performing mm-hmm. with them. Mm-hmm. And these are all college students, and mm-hmm. I was getting along with college students, mm-hmm. and so it it was just like I've always used. Everybody looks at me like a kid. Even the directors that I work with today that mm-hmm. have known me for 20 plus years, they, yeah. they treat me differently because they can't help it. They're yeah, like, yeah. They, they still see that kid. Yes. And when other people look at me like that, mm-hmm. it's hard to see myself like that as an adult because it's like everybody treats me like the kid, the kid of the group, the kid of the group. And mm-hmm. then I finally was like, you know what? I'm not mm-hmm. <laughs> 30 years old. Yeah. You know, it's it's time to look at myself like an adult and it's yes. time to treat myself like my career isn't some thing that's I'm tr- just trying to get off the ground. It's a thing that's happening. Yes. Yes. Majorly. Majorly. Yes. And, and I think that viewpoint, you know, it's helped. I like your, your heart of gratitude and healing um, for these milestones you're making. Um, Talk about that healing process a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's just a lot of, a lot of forgiving myself. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's, there are a lot of things that have happened that um, I've let go because of, because of my trauma and because I was scared Mm -hmm. to try things and, or to believe in myself. Okay. There's, I think the biggest, um, thing I've had to forgive myself for is uh, I auditioned for a major mil- movie. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest audition of my life. Mm-hmm. And um, it was for a Mark Wahlberg movie. And I looked like the character that they were making the movie based off of. Mm-hmm. And I recognized it. And I worked so hard. I messaged all the studios that were, or the, all the studio and producers that were involved with the production because mm-hmm. I, I had an IMDb pro account, which meant I saw who was producing the movie, mm-hmm. the numbers of the agencies, the numbers of every, okay. I wrote them all down and I called and emailed and said, I really think I'd be a great fit for this movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, I look exactly like this guy. Here's mm-hmm. my picture. And they, and they agreed. And, uh, mm-hmm. so they sent me to casting, uh, Sheila Jaffe casting. And I might be saying that wrong, but, she produces everything, or she casts everything on HBO, mm-hmm. including The Sopranos, which is, um, as an Italian, that's a big one. Yeah. That's okay. a big one. Yes. So I was very familiar with her. So to be able to make it this far in the process, I was just like, this is it. This is this is it. Like, this really is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got to, I got to, so it, it was for the role of the, Boston Marathon bomber, mm-hmm. and I look exactly like him. I recognize you that. You sure do. I do. I can re- turn I re- you in. I, oh, gosh. You know, there, there was so a, one of my friends is a radio host, and he mm-hmm. said, that, "Doesn't that guy look like Michael Fortino though?" Mm-hmm. And I said, "Why did you have to say my last name uh-uh. on the air to get the FBI looking?" For, no, uh, <laughs> no. And, but I recognize it, and and they uh, sent me to casting, and they sent me three scenes to memorize, wow. three whole scenes, and. And one of them was in Russian mm. and I didn't speak Russian. 
Mm-hmm. But guess what? My friend that I, Chris Bailey uh, of Le Chat Noir downtown, mm-hmm. he had a friend that spoke. Uh, it was from Chechnya, which is the same place where the right. character is from. Mm-hmm. And she spoke Russian, and she taught me Russian in two weeks and wow. for the mm-hmm. scene. Uh, not only that, but at Augusta University, there is the uh, an expert in Chechen culture, the leading mm-hmm. expert in Chechen mm-hmm. culture mm-hmm. at Augusta University mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. testified at this man's trial. Wow. Wow. And everything was just falling into place. And I felt like, and, and Chris Bailey was my reading partner for the scene and he's one of the best actors in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, I felt like I had the perfect team. And I was like, there is no way I'm (laughs) not going to get this role. Yes. And I was never more prepared for a role in my life. Mm -hmm. And, and then, uh, my agent, uh, hooked me up with a an acting coach, mm-hmm. and I did a rehearsal with her, mm-hmm. and um, she was like, I'm not going to lie. I saw that you were from Augusta, Georgia, and I thought this guy's not going to be any good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And wow. now I see you're good. Uh, so I'm going to send somebody out there to coach you during your audition. Mm-hmm. And this lady was... Nothing like the previous acting coach I had worked with, mm-hmm. and this is supposed to be very serious. This is mm-hmm. a, it's uh, it's a movie based on uh, the Boston Marathon bombings. Right. It's supposed to be serious, and she made my audition very Nickelodeon, very Disney Channel, okay, and very over the top. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was looking at Chris, my scene partner, and he kind of looked at me weird too. And I was like, "This is this is bad." Mm. And I'm thinking that, but I didn't have the courage to say that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like this person works in Hollywood. Who? What do I know? I don't work mm. in Hollywood. Right. Neither does Chris. But I think Chris is a good actor. But what do I know? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. apparently nothing. Trusting the process. Right. And I didn't. Mm. And I let. I shot the audition exactly the way she wanted me to do mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. instead of exactly the way I wanted to do it. Mm. Right. And it cost me. I didn't get the role. Mm. I still can't watch that audition tape. It's terrible, terrible. Mm. It's the one of the worst things I've ever put out. And all I can see in my face is I don't trust myself. I don't trust this scene. Mm. Mm-hmm. The only scene I trusted myself was the scene in Russian because she didn't understand what I was <laughs> saying. So um, I, I really beat myself up about that mm. for years, for, for years, because I felt like, I blew my opportunity to really make something out of myself because that movie was star stacked. It was right. Mm-hmm. Mark Wahlberg and John Goodman and mm-hmm. J.K. Simmons. These are Oscar award winning actors. And I, I, I was like, I blew it. And I, it took me so long to forgive myself for that. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I had no faith then. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. another important thing. Yes. And then I realized, as I got older, that's not what that's not what God wanted me to do. Okay. God didn't want that for me. Okay. And God led left led me down a different path. Mm-hmm. If I would have booked that role, who knows what would have happened? Mm-hmm. That's right. Would I have been associated with that character for the rest of my life? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yes. the guy that played the Boston Marathon. Yeah. Runner. Do yeah. I want that? Yeah. No, yeah. No, no. Yes. Yes. But. I trusted the process. Mm-hmm. I trusted that if I put the work in that I'm supposed to put in, mm-hmm. then things will will turn the way I want it or or that I hoped it will. Mm-hmm. And that goes with having the right people around you Absolutely. And, and, and how it affects you. So she wasn't really your person. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. She wasn't your person to get you to a level right yeah and the thing was my agent uh later on because i was in this narcissistic phase of mm-hmm. i i know i got th- i i had to get this. right, mm-hmm. there, right. There, there there's so many things that lined up that seemed so, that seemed like god had set that up himself okay mm-hmm. right okay. And it's like how many times can you how many wonderful coincidences could happen to me that could set me up for this moment and then it just not happen. It's just, it's right. It, but I had no, I felt like I was just entitled to it. Oh, mm-hmm. and I think that's important yeah. to, to keep in mind. Cause it was like, 
that mind, I was not in the right mindset at that point. So, so could confidence versus narcissism be sure. two separate things? Because narcissism absolutely. is like, like you said, entitlement. Entitlement. Yeah, like, right. why, like why wouldn't I you work, pick me? I work hard. Yeah. I do all the work. Why shouldn't mm. the work come to me? Yes, right. yes. That sense of entitlement of like, yeah, it, it should just all come to me. Mm. And uh, I learned quickly in, in, in no. She, no, don't work <laughs> like gotta, that. You got to show up if you want to be seen. Yes, you yes. Know? Big slice of homo pie. Absolutely. Yes. And there was nothing more humbling than going to New York City and auditioning for Aladdin. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I'm a great singer. In the right. musical theater community here in Augusta, I'm considered a good to great singer. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh-huh. Um, I look like Aladdin. <laughs> I, yeah, I was nineteen twenty at the time, yeah. so I was a little yeah, bit yeah. more cleaner and younger, and uh, I I looked like Aladdin, and mm-hmm. I was like, why wouldn't they want to cast me? Yeah, right? yeah. And I get up there, and uh, I I made the mistake to listen to the person before me. Mm. It's the most, it was the most incredible singer I've ever heard in my <laughs> life. <laughs> And he didn't get a call back. <laughs> yeah. And wow. I was right after him and I thought, there's no way. I, um, I've never, I, I think that was my, one of my first slices of true humble pie. Okay. Right? Cause I went in there and sang and they were like, that was nice. Thanks. <laughs> uh huh. Appreciate you. Moving on. We got, we got yeah. hundreds of people to see. Yeah. Like, what? And they had that yeah. New York attitude. <laughs> yeah. And the New York attitude for sure. And, as you said it earlier, having the right people yes. really right. make a difference. Because I think God put uh, a couple of uh, people in my life, uh, Chris Bailey, as I talked about earlier. Yes. And uh, my professor, Doug Joyner. And, yes. Um, this is a different professor than the one we spoke about previously. But mm-hmm. um, I was 19 years old, and I was I was just really thought I was it. Mm. <laughs> okay. So I really that thought humility I was it. is really <laughs> Yep. Yeah. I really thought I was it. And mm. um my prof- I was auditioning for Amadeus and mm. uh I auditioned for the lead and I was no no, I'm sorry, I was eighteen. Mm-hmm. And my professor was like, uh, are you going to AU next year? Uh-huh. And I'm thinking he's like, oh, because he wants me to be in his place at the university, of course. I said, yes, of course I'm going. He goes, good, because your acting is terrible. Oh, <laughs> and I really builder. would love some time to work with you. Wow. And really could, would like to have you in my acting classes. And I've known Doug at this point since for 10 years. Uh, I worked with him when I was nine. Mm. And it was like, he liked me when I was nine. And I bet he's going to love me when I'm 18. <laughs> and he did not. He thought I was really bad. And I was. I was really bad. I remember going back and just watching some of my old performances. And, of course, you grow and you get better. Right. Mm-hmm. But the mindset I was at didn't match where I was on my right. talent-wise. Yes, yes. And I really humbled myself through that. And I'm so That's grateful good. that I had somebody tell me that. Yes. And even as harsh as it sounds... I don't think anything else would have got through to me at that point. Okay. Right? It's like, if he would have been nice about it, it's like, we can work on some stuff, but I think you're good. You know, I think you're good. You mm-hmm. just could need some work, you know, flowery kind of. Right. No, I need blunt, people to be blunt with me. Yes. And tell yes. me things yes. that I cannot see. And yes. that saved my life because it, 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 it put a different work ethic in me. Right. As far as what I prepare for characters and shows. And, but yeah. Yeah. That, that accountability, that, that's huge, yeah. and mm-hmm. and it seems like it's a whole, uh, it's a huge tree sure. with many limbs. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just like, but the root of it is that you have to take accountability. Absolutely. And and also, um, it branched. It seemed like it branched out with um, the uh, the gentleman telling you, you know, you need help. Okay. Right. You're not that good. Yes. Okay. Yes. So so, but you humbled yourself, and you accepted that help. So it's helped you to move on along. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And yes. without without him, and I still I'm still in contact with him today. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime something big happens, you know, I remind him that he, you know, because he has his own. And I won't get too much of his stuff, but yeah. you know, uh, he. I noticed that he, like me, struggles with confidence in in, in himself. And okay, I, and I, because I feel like. 
sometimes professors and teachers or people in our lives mm -hmm. need to know how important their impact was on us. Yes. Right. Yes. Because yes. I remember in my lowest times, and I'll have younger students message me and say, mm -hmm. that day you came in and taught me that class, and mm -hmm. that, that really changed my life. Yes. And, that, and they have no idea how impactful that is to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or where I'm at in my life. Yes. And even though to them it's just a small little class. Right. To me, that, that means uh, it means the world. A lot. To impact one person. Right. right. And that's how we feel about this podcast. When yeah. someone tells you, you know, I listen and yeah. this, I listen to you guys every week. And mm -hmm. this really helps me. Yeah. And it, you're like, wow, okay, so I am right. in the will of God. Yeah. Because if you help one person. Yes. You know, that's everything. It really is. And, and. When my professor, uh, uh, Doug, when Doug and I worked together on a, a play, mm -hmm. um, finally, it was called Tribes, and it was a character, I played a character that was deaf, mm -hmm. and usually we would reserve that role for somebody in the deaf community. Right. Okay. But right. we, at the time, didn't have a strong uh, uh, community of actors in the deaf community. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I was challenged with the role, and um, the biggest thing about that was if I didn't put in the work, mm -hmm. if I didn't have that work ethic instilled in me, mm -hmm. I would offend an entire community. Of yes. yes, yes, and yes. And my job, it, no, I don't know what it's like to be deaf. And mm -hmm. no, I don't mm -hmm. know what it's like to struggle uh, to communicate with my family in that respect. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to be the one that understood them as much as I could. Right. And tell their story. Yes. Because it's not my story. It's yeah. their story. Yes. And the only thing I could find in common ground was the the tough communication within the family. Right. Right. I found common ground, but I wanted to make sure that I told that story accurately. And I had mm. to learn to speak like I was deaf, right. too, mm. which is tough. It, we tried a bunch of different things. I put in a bottom retainer mm. to cut out my consonants because oh. it's kind of takes out your consonants. And right. then you're, they have no sense of volume as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I digress. But... I, I put a lot, a lot of work, and I learned sign language. Mm -hmm. I only had weeks to learn sign language, and I worked so hard on this role. Mm -hmm. And we did the performances and had decent turnouts, and it didn't get the reception I thought it would because mm -hmm. it's such a powerful piece, and it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. And the last night, um, one, of the, one of my regulars at the coffee shop I worked at came in and he's partially deaf mm -hmm. and um he's crying and he was like uh that was me wow and i had never been more moved by yes. an audience yes. member before because i was just like if mm. i could just tell your story yes. yes then i don't care i don't care what anybody else has to say yes, yes. because this is your story this isn't mine yes mm. and if i could tell your story accurately that's all i care about mm. You know. That's wonderful because when acting like that, you really care about the people that you portray and represent. Right, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not like the uh, the gangster picture where you wind, wind up with a horse head in right. your bed. You wait. Oh gosh, <laughs> Lord, Lord God, no, yeah, you, I, oh gosh, it's all about no, accountability, the baby. <laughs> the Godfather classic. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what yes. I was like. To, to be fair, I was named after Michael Corleone. Oh my so. goodness! Oh, that's all right. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't good, need a horse You got grits. I don't, need, <laughs> I don't need a horse head next to me in the morning, all right? No, <laughs> okay. no. Okay, so in this session, we talked about accountability, healing, gratitude, having the right people around, and how that's effective. And so we want to end on encouragement that you, Mike, will leave for parents concerning generational family traumas. I, uh, yeah, I think it's super important, you know, if that you're carrying some trauma, that it's best that you would, you address it yourself mm -hmm. Espe and try not to let it, uh, leak over into your family life mm -hmm. and let your child experience that trauma. I think it's important that open communication about it mm -hmm. is, I, I think that's super important just to be able to talk about it. To mm -hmm. understand, because children are more empathetic than we think, yes. and more understanding than we think. Mm -hmm. And um, I've done a lot of com uh, children's theater, 
And one thing that we were taught is to never talk down to the kids. Yes. You talk at their level. Mm-hmm. Never talk down to them. Mm-hmm. I would never look over a child. I would always kneel down. I, I took it literally, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would always kneel down and talk to them at their level. That's powerful. It mm-hmm. is. It, it's, it's, it's important because mm. kids know that. And kids are smart. Especially yes. today, they're way smarter. Oh, yes. yes. They're way oh, yeah. smarter. The more access to technology they have, the more mm-hmm. they know words and they know more about mental health now. And it's yes. more mm-hmm. it's more common. So yes. there's no need to hide it anymore. Yes. This is, mm-hmm. We're in a different generation now. We're yes. in a different world where we can openly talk about what's bothering us. Not only, you know, obviously there should be some filter with our kids. Yes. Mm-hmm. Use oh, yeah. common sense yeah. with our filters. Yes. But to talk about pain that you've gone through and to mm-hmm. talk about how it has shaped you as a person. Yes. I think that's important, especially if they're, especially if they're in high school, middle school. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because that's when some things start to kick out of yourself, especially like I was like, this anxiety started kicking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, had mm-hmm. I known if it was a generational thing, yes. mm-hmm. something my grandmother struggled with, something that my mom was struggling right. with. Mm-hmm. It's something that we could have talked about. Mm-hmm. And worked on together. Yes. 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 You know, and um, I, towards the end of my father's life, you know, I realized the mental health issues that he was struggling with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it broke my heart that it took me so long to mm-hmm. see it. Yes. And, but I'm happy that I at least got to see it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because I was able to talk to him and have more in depth conversations with him that I ever had in my entire mm-hmm. life. Those last, uh, you know, that last month, that was those last three months of his life where we got to spend so much time together. Yes. I learned more about my father in those three months than I did in my entire life. Wow. Yes. Intentional. Intentional. Mm -hmm. Intentional. And I never heard him be so open about his, his pain. Mm -hmm. Not just the physical pain that he was going Mm -hmm. through, but the, the emotional pain of his trauma from his childhood Mm. to, you know, my sister, and I'll make this brief, but my sister got married Mm. and this is my first, uh, this is my dad's um, first biological child's wedding. Okay. Mm. My other siblings have been married and he was there and he, he's, my dad is a great dad to all Mm. of us. Yes. All of us, including my half siblings. Yes. And, um, but he was so proud. This is the first one that he's paying for. This is on his dime. This is his <laughs> wedding. Yeah. And he invited all of his siblings. And we go to we went to mm-hmm. all their weddings. And, mm-hmm. and they didn't show up. Jeez. Wow. Wow. It broke his heart. Mm. Because he was always the, the outcast. Mm. And this was the time to show, like, this, I can right. do this too. Yes. I'm yes. a part of this family too. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's still trying to prove himself. Still trying to prove himself. Right. And mm-hmm. it felt right. like at the end, even then. And he told, and he would talk about it, which is mm-hmm. how much it hurt him. And, um, and how, you know, and I helped, tried to help him forgive. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but, it, you know, he was, one thing about like when somebody opens up to you, like that when a parent does finally open up. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now they see you as that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Which is great, mm-hmm. but uh, um, but it really, yeah, it broke him. But uh, just yeah, but I guess to summarize it all, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on a little tangent there. It's just be be open to 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 talk to your kids about yes. things. Yes, your truth, your truth. Yes, your truth. Yep. to thine own self be true. Yes, yes, that's yes. one thing we've learned too. You you need to be truthful. About Absolutely. what is going on, right, within you, exactly. Mm. Michael Forentino, y'all look for that name mm-hmm. on CBS, NBC. I want my Emmy ticket <laughs> <laughs> on huge platforms because one thing I want to say to you, Michael, you're doing the work spiritually and naturally, so God can trust you with the next. Thank okay, you. congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, congratulations. It's it's coming. Uh, yes. It's coming. It's coming. So I'm going to keep your phone number. So you Please see do. 808. Now <laughs> I you, got you. you. Okay? <laughs> but it's coming because yes. you're you're doing the work spiritually and naturally. Mm-hmm. And so we are so honored to have connected with you. Me too. Me too. You guys. I, I, and listen, a lot of my turnaround, in my in, especially in faith as of late, 
has come from this show and has praise come God. from this. Amen. Praise and God. Really, Amen. And I truly mean that. And I, the, mo- the more I've listened to this show and produced this show, I've really dug deeper and deeper into myself and my relationship with God. So I really yes. much appreciate you guys. To God. You might be all the glory. Play about this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, to God be all yeah. the glory because we can do nothing, yep. nothing, nothing without him. So thank you, Michael yes. Forentino. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, I, it's coming. And I, mm-hmm. I look forward to seeing it. Yes, yes, yes. So mm-hmm. these sessions have been rich. And so we hope you all listen to all four and we always like to give out our hotline for mental health, the 988 hotline, the text 741741, that's free, 24-7 crisis counseling. And if you do not know exactly what you need, call, <clears throat> excuse me, the community resource number 211. Mr. Perry. I always want to do this. Good morning, Vietnam. <laughs> I tell you, you know, accountability is very important. And one thing about getting that accountability down is not a bad word to say no. And accountability means being on time. And once you're on time with that, you affect others and show the right way to have success. And remember, in your life, always try to live the life that you want to live and not just exist. This has been Young People Nation. Remember, there is always. Let's go. Christ is the foundation. Know his word gonna lead us. Know I'm already going. Taking steps I believe in. Giving guidance to the youth. Giving guidance to the lost. Give the world to the project. Lead them back to the cross. He the number one prospect. He the top, top boss. I was broke. I was empty. He the one to paint the cost. Really thought that I was cool. There was nothing like the savior. Now it's time for the truth. The whole world been waiting. It's young people nation. 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 The whole world been waiting. Whatever you going through, I know what he gonna do. Don't matter the circumstance, we going back to the room. Keep going, keep going. Let the seed keep growing. You need peace and we know it. Now it's time to live holy. Young people nation. You know what time it is. Young people nation. Get ready, the time is here. Get ready, we vibing here. We about to let God in here. Young people nation. It's young people nation. Yeah, do it for the heavens. You know where we going. Influenced by his love, you know we got to show it. It's time to put the youth on to what God is doing. Cause I can tell you now, right now, that God is moving. It's young people nation.